my name is uh, Stian Sule. I'm the country manager for DNVGL uh, here in uh, Japan. And I have the honor and the privilege to introduce our first panel here today. And the topic is on the global sulfur cap. Uh, this is a topic that I believe is very high on the agenda for everyone in shipping these days, and has been so for a, a while. And I think the, uh, the reason for being on top of the agenda is it's, it's quite uh, justified because the introduction of a 0.50% sulfur cap is causing nothing short of a paradigm shift in marine fuels. Uh, it's more than just another regulation. It's a complex uh, challenge, and, and how the owners are choosing to comply might, or have chosen to comply already, might impact their competitiveness in the future. There are uncertainty with respect to uh, availability of compliant fuel. It's uncertainty with respect to technical solutions, and there's also certain uh, uncertainty with respect to the enforcement of the sulfur cap. So this makes the transition hard and challenging for quite many in the industry these days. Uh, and on top of this, we have also future environmental regulations on the horizon. In particular, IMO's greenhouse gas uh, targets are causing also challenges for shipping going forward. So it will be essential to know the impact of these regulations and it will be important going forward, for sure. And that's why I'm happy to say that we have a great panel with us today to, uh, to help us get clarity in this. So if I can please have the panelists come up on stage, I will introduce one, each and one of them. So if the panelists can please enter to the stage. So then we have all the great minds of the maritime industry gathered here on the, on the stage, at least a few of them. Uh, so I'll just start to introduce each and one of them, and I'll start with my left one here. Uh, this is uh, Eddie Valentis. He has over 25 years of shipping industry experience, including owning, operating, and managing tankers. He founded Pixis Tankers uh, and is now serving as their chief executive officer and chairman of the board of directors, which he has done since the inception. In 2001, Mr. Valentis was appointed president and CEO of Concar Shipping, uh, a dry bulk operator based in Greece, which is a position he is holding today. Then next one, we have Mr. Svadebjörn Svenning. He's a fellow Norwegian, uh, and he has been working in the maritime industry since 1989. Initially as a broker with RS Plateau, thereafter Barber Marine Consultants, working on the development of deep sea Roro carriers for Wilhelm Wilhelmsen. In January 1997, quite some years ago, he was uh, employed by Fernlease, being responsible for their market analysis and project development with emphasis on commodity markets and international seaborne trade. Then next to him, we have one of our uh, Japanese uh, panelists, Mr. Tanaka-san. He is a senior fellow of MTI, which is uh, Mono Hakobi Technology Institute, which is part of the NYK group. He is also a technical advisor to NYK. Tanaka-san joined NYK back in 1979, and in NYK technical group, he has been in charge of both design, maintenance, repair projects for the NYK fleet. After oversee positions in Australia and Finland, he has held several management positions in NYK, including appointment as NYK Senior Managing Corporate Officer in 2015. In 2016, he became president of MTI, and after April this year, actually last month, he has been Senior Fellow of MTI and also a technical advisor of NYK. Then we have also another one of our Japanese panelists, uh, Kawagosan. He uh, has since uh, 2018 been Senior Managing Executive Officer, Chief Technical Officer, and Director General of Technology Innovation Unit at MOL. Kawagosan is responsible for Technical Division, Smart Shipping Division, secondary responsible for uh, MOL Information System. Kawagosan is also an outspoken and high profile representative of the Japanese maritime industry. And then finally, at the end of the table here, we have Mr. Dimitris Chrysostomo. He's the Group Director, Marketing and Business Development in Columbia Ship Management. 
He has been with Columbia Ship Management for the past 20 years, during which time he has held numerous positions, including managing directors of Columbia Singapore office, before returning back to Columbia Cyprus office and taking up his current position in 2013. So quite a good amount of experience, knowledge and experience gathered on this table today which I'm very happy to say, so we can have some very, I think we can have some very good discussion and input on the impacts of the global sulfur cap and other forthcoming environmental regulations. So I think I'll just start the panel with a very general question, which I hope each and every one of you can help me answer. And that is, what impact do you believe the, the sulfur cap and other forthcoming environmental regulations may have for your company? And this is maybe a bit of a cliche question, but do you see this as a threat or do you see it as an opportunity? And I think we can maybe start with uh, Mr. Chrysostomo all the way at the other end of the table. Okay, so uh, I'm representing obviously the ship managers on this panel. Uh, from our perspective, I wouldn't say there's a threat uh, I'll say there's challenges coming ahead. Uh, challenges are more in terms of, uh, first of all, factors that we wouldn't be able to control, uh, such as uh, availability of the fuel, the compatibility of fuels. So these are challenges for us uh, to make sure that we can comply with these for our clients. Um, as Columbia Ship Management, uh, we've been trading quite a large fleet, so we trade to echo zones for a number of years now, so it's not anything new to have more than two grades of fuel on board our ships. Uh, so uh, we are quite prepared for this. In the meantime, what we've done is we've uh, created uh, ship implementation plans for all our vessels individually uh, as part of the preparation. Uh, our, our challenge is obviously to make sure that we uh, service our clients properly, make sure that they don't have any disruption to their fleet uh, with upcoming uh, uh, sulfur regulations. And on the other side, we also see this as an opportunity. Um, with more regulation, uh, it becomes more complicated uh, for small operators, and this is where people start to look at the, the expertise of reputable companies like Columbia Ship Management uh, to uh, deal with new regulation coming. So for us, I think there's not a threat, there's, there's challenges, uh, which we are well geared to deal with, and at the same time, there's also opportunity coming uh, for, for good ship management companies, I believe. Thank you very much. Uh, Kawagosan. Do you have anything to add? I know what I should say. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm え、はい、お、0.5% 他のパートナーと一緒にヨーロッパでエネルギー燃料のサプライ事業をスタートしておりますけれども、まあ、そういう事業にとってはオプティニティが増えるということで、
、えー、今のところは心配の方が多いですけども、まあ、あのいろんな解決策を見つけてですね、まあ、あのこれはやっていくべきものだというふうに思っております。Thank you very much,、uh, Tarakia san. Mr. s p e n n i n g Right. As,、um, as a shipbroker,、uh, I'd say that、uh, this is, I mean, has basically a neutral impact on, on, on our company. But having said that,、uh, I would also like to draw into to, to, to the equation, I mean, the, the, what's going on actually these days in the MFSC meeting in the IMO, which is on、uh, emissions. And looking down the road,、uh, we think that this will impact valuation, it will impact contracting of new tonnage, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, as brokers, if we see our market expand, we hope to grab our piece of that cake. So, having said that,、uh, it's positive for us, but I mean, in the immediate future, it's sort of neutral. Thank you very much, Mr. s p e n n i n g Valentis, Mr. Valentis.、Uh, thank you. Thank you, Captain Link, for inviting me again at your uh, very interesting uh, uh, conference.、Um, from the ship owner's perspective, the mid, mid, medium,、uh, small size uh, uh, ship owner's perspective,、uh, we believe that、uh, we're heading into an, let's say, organized chaos、uh, as far as the、uh, 1st of January of 2020 is concerned. We still、uh, don't know if a lot of things about、uh, availability, compatibility of low sulfur. Uh, of course, it goes without saying that companies like us, the majority, will be switching to low sulfur fuel and will not be installing scrubbers. So, uh, uh, still, it is a very uncertain、uh, area, which we, as you said,、uh, Stian,、uh, which we are heading to.、Uh, of course,、uh, we also consider that there will be opportunities. It's a major disruption, and、uh, especially for companies like us, which are、uh, in the product、uh, tanker business. We think there will be a lot of opportunities uh,、um, uh, for increased volume, increased capacity, especially after Q3 of this year. Therefore, we're very hopeful for a good market.、Um, if I also can、uh, address the point that、uh, Sver said about、uh, MEPC 74 and the meeting at IMO, this is a very, very important meeting this week. We expect a lot to be decided. And we expect、uh, member states to back shipping and not create a chaos. This is the last opportunity for shipping, MEPC 74 this week, the last opportunity for shipping to, to lead this reg new regulation to a normal way in the 1st of January of 2020. Thank you very much,、uh, Valentis. So, so, just to sum up、uh, the round of the first questions there. There are a certain anxiety, at least, or 60% ex,、uh, anxiety, as to quote、uh, <laughs> Nakasan. I think the panel here also sees some、uh, opportunities, but、uh, there are anxiety concerned with the, especially with respect to the uncertainty of everything. And it's very clear that this is the last chance for、uh, IMO and MAPC meeting to kind of try to calm down the, the industry and, and, and、uh, get settled a few things、uh, going forward. Just before I move on to the next question here,、uh, Mr. Valentis, you mentioned about the opportunities for the product、uh, tanker trade.、Um, I just want to check if there's anyone on the others on the panel that sees these k i n d of opportunities. Yes, the product、uh, tanker market is, is a natural kind of candidate for,、uh, for increased,、uh, I would say, opportunities going forward. Do you see any, anything else with respect to the trades?、Uh, maybe, Mr. Svenning, if you have any comments to, to that. Thank you, yes.、Um, I mean, the, the global market for、uh, marine fuel is, I mean, depending on whom you ask, I mean, two and a half to three million barrels of、uh, heavy fuel oil per day. And it's quite clear that coming to the 1st of January next year, there will be a mismatch between the demand for compliant fuels, marine gas oils, and there will still be vast amounts of high sulfur fuel oil produced. I mean, it's a, it's a natural consequence of、uh, distillating crude oil. And、um, the refineries have to do something about that. I mean,、uh, they have to store it. And we believe that we will see more floating storage activity on particularly VLCCs. And we will see more trade of high sulfur fuel oil, or if you could call it next year, off spec fuel oil, 
for downstream cracking, but that has to be done in other parts of the world. So we think that, yes, a consequence will be increased, increased demand for, I mean, uh, uh, dirty tankers in, in general. And, uh, well, considering the market right now, uh, I think that most tanker owners will be happy about that. Very good. Any other comments from other of the, uh, any other of the panelists with respect to this? Tanaka-san. えっと、先ほどあの、術開発っていうかそういうのは少しずつ進んでくるのかなと思います。ま、やってみると意外とこれは良かったとかですね。え、いろんなことが分かりますんで、ま、あの、そういう面にも期待しております。うん。Thank you, Tanaka-san. Uh, as we will now see a new global sulfur cap, uh, for sure the, the likelihood of increased fuel prices going forward is quite high. Uh, there are different, uh, I would say, expectations to, to what the new fuel prices will be, but for sure there will be an increase. Uh, and this is something that I believe will benefit uh, new and uh, more energy efficient tonnage. Uh, on top of this, we have also ballast water treatment uh, systems installations where basically we will have the majority of the fleet will have to install this before 2022. Uh, so my question to the panel, I'll, and in addition to the ballast water treatment system, sorry, we also have the greenhouse gas uh, regulations uh, coming forward. So my question to the panel is, um, are we likely to see increased scrapping post-2020 and will that have or what's your thoughts with respect to the new building market going forward as a result of that? And maybe this time we will start with Mr. Valentis and then we can move uh, in the other direction. Uh, thank you, Stian. Uh, the, uh, f as far as the product tanker sector is concerned I am, and the MR size which we are concentrating on, uh, we, um, this year, uh, approximately 7% of the total fleet is at 19 years of age. So uh, next year with IMO 2020, and as you said, ballast water treatment systems kicking in, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, these vessels will have to decide whether they will go uh, through their fourth special survey with substantial capex costs. Um, considering also the increase of the potential increase of uh, low sulfur fuel, because these vessels for de definitely will not be installing scrubbers. Uh, therefore, these are highly likely candidates for scrapping. And I'm sure that uh, Zver will also uh, say about other sectors, which I'm not aware, but uh, other sectors also have um, old ladies that uh, might decide not to go through uh, this huge uh, capex expenditure. Let's not forget that uh, um, uh, scrap, uh, scrap uh, values are still high, so it makes sense uh, um, uh, for a vessel, for an older lady to go for scrap uh, rather than having to go through this uh, expenditure for another three or four years. Thank you very much. Svare. Uh, yeah, I, I, I fully agree with you. And uh, I mean, you could, uh, you could add on to the, the bills piling up in front of the ship owners that uh, organizations like your own uh, every now and then wants to come aboard and see mm -hmm. that everything is in good shape. So, I mean, we also have special surveys that also cost money. So. Going forward, how much are fuel prices going to increase? Um, we have seen analysis, we have seen arguments for anything between 50 to 100 dollars up to 500 dollars compared to the current HS uh, high sulfur fuel oil. Uh, we simply don't know, but what we do know is that marine gas oil for the past 15, 20 years has been priced uh, at on average 246 dollars more than, than fuel oil. So if we take that, and consider a five, seven-year-old non-eco design compared to a brand new eco design, 
I mean, the fuel bill is starting to be quite big and it will have a negative impact on the valuation on the non-eco types and particularly the older ones and they will be pushed out sooner rather than later. Uh, so it will contribute to, to rebalancing the market. Um, when it comes to ordering of new tonnage, um, yes, uh, but we also see that the ship owning community of, of, of the world these days don't really have the funding they had some years ago because markets have been poor for many, many years and with a, with a huge outflow of cash. So, um, but it, it will come, but maybe not immediately in 2020. May I um, add about the pricing of uh, low sulfur? Um, um, considering today the marine gas oil is about $255, a differential with uh, high sulfur, uh, the futures indicate for low sulfur by the end of this year to be in the region of $125. This is the differential that we're uh, budgeting today. Of course, because of the disruption that we will face and the uncertainty of the s capacities and the quantities of low sulfur, we do, do not exactly know, but we are budgeting for about 125 differential today for the low sulfur, the 0 0.5. Mm. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Uh, Tanaka-san. え、ま、確かにその環境対応技術に対するこれは投資ですから、ですからそのまあ、あの、オーナーにとってはですね、その、それなりの投資になりますんで、え、要するに一般的に言うとスクラップの方が進むんだと思いますけれども、ただこれは
So in other words, which is, will effectively uh, result in slow steaming if these regulations come into force. At the same time, there are other lobbying uh, parties uh, who are looking at uh, incentive-based regulations. Uh, in other words, um, penalizing uh, less efficient vessels and rewarding vessels which are more efficient. So I think it all depends on if these regulations will come to force or not, uh, on slow steaming or incentive-based regulations. The price differential is important. And uh, I think these, depending how this will uh, pan out, uh, in the, in the next uh, year or so, um, whether we will see a, a kind of uh, a speed up of scrapping or whether the scrapping will take a longer time. So I think it's, it will come, but uh, I think what's not clear is how fast then uh, the scrapping will take place. Thank you, thank you very much. I, just to sum up uh, this round, I, I believe there is a general consensus that there will be scrapping. To which, de to which degree there will be scrapping is of course another question. And also comments that maybe the slow steaming part and speed limits would also uh, kind of take up part of the capacity. Uh, anyway, I think this is at least small positive signs for a rebound, possible rebound on the new building market going uh, going forward. Without being too optimistic, at least it's it's not on the it's not negative for the new building market post 2020. Unless you have any comments to to this from from the panel. Uh, I think uh, Sver uh, said uh, exactly what's going on regarding new buildings. Uh, besides the environmental uncertainties and technical uncertainties. There is also the financial constraint. Uh, banks are not there, no. uh, especially uh, commercial banks in Europe are not there to lend uh, for uh, new building projects. I'm sure that's why we're here also, because uh, Japanese uh, leasing companies and uh, other leasing companies in the Far East are very active. But uh, as far as Europe is concerned, they're quite close regarding new buildings. Mm. Uh, just a follow-up question on uh, uh, related to new building is, well, now we have the global sulfur cap, uh, we have uh, NOx tier 3, we have greenhouse gas regulations on the agenda. So from your point of view, what do you believe will be kind of the, the compliance alternative on the rise after 2020? Will we see scrubbers on every new building or will we see more LNG or LPG or, or will we continue to go on with compliant fuel and speed limits or will there be a combination? Um, maybe we can start with Kawagos on the first and then we take the... Okay. Hi, I know. Tankitekniwadesne,今スクラバーちょっと流行りになってますけどまあどうですかね,あの... 供給量と今現世界に動いてる船の数を比べますとですねまあ非常に限定的なんでしょうねそれからまあ新しい燃料も将来的にはですね非常にこっちを模索していかなきゃいけないんですけどもやはりここそうですね5年10年ぐらいの
For me, it feels like shipping is where the car industry was um, 30 years, almost 30 years ago, when they were switching from uh, leaded uh, gasoline to unleaded gasoline. Uh, this is where the industry is today. Regarding new technology, we're very far away. I, um, we certainly believe that LNG is an interesting perspective, but technology, especially for the vast uh, uh, middle-sized uh, vessels is not still there. So um, uh, we, we really have to uh, rely on <coughs> reliable low sulfur fuel, uh, 0 0.5, and in that respect we need to know exactly uh, which blends will be available, at what uh, quantities, and at what, uh, um, and whether they will com be compatible. This is very important at this stage. Thank you. Sveta? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'd say that, uh, that scrubbers is not a good solution, but it is the solution available right now, and it's a short-term solution. But, I mean, things tend to even out as time goes by, and I think that the compatibility between the low sulfur fuel oil blends, uh, they will be a standard for low sulfur fuel oil blends I mean, maybe not next year or 2021 or 2022, but within five years it will be that. And then moving forward towards 2030 and, 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 and CO2 emissions, I think that, as it was mentioned, that new designs based on a new design speed, new hull forms optimized for slower speeds, but still, of course, with the ability to speed up, is something that's going to be extremely important. And alternative fuels, well, the... The price tag for an uh, Aframax-sized uh, vessel today running on LNG is, I mean, the conventional price plus 10 to 12 million US dollars. So it, uh, there is a significant price tag. But that delta has been reduced by 50 to 60 percent over the past seven, eight years, and it's still going down. So I, I think that LNG is definitely going to be, become a viable fuel. LPG. Um, Yes, in certain cases, uh, then, uh, I mean, to be a bit more exotic and dreaming, I mean, ammonia has a lot of merits. I mean, a lot of good things could be said about ammonia as fuel. But that is, that is I mean, a, a dream scenario right now. But still, I think a, a, lot of, a lot of things will happen and take place on development. But reducing consumption, I mean, the speed consumption curve, for any ship is, I mean, the, the key feature of a ship that one has to consider in a sale and purchase situation or a new building contracting situation. Thank you very much, Svara. Uh, Tanaka-san, do you have any additional comments? Hi. Yes, you know, the only solution is the solution that 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 is the トライをしてます先ほど申し上げた、まあ、LNG、これは積数的にはあの非常に限られてますけども、まあえっとえー、お客さんとの長期契約のある船ではです、ねまあ、スクラバーをつけていくとかです、ねまあ、そういうこともやっております、ただ、まあ、マジョリティは先ほどちょっと川越さんが触れましたけれども適合その<咳>、適合油の品質というところがですね、その2、3年のうちでは非常に、えー、懸念されますんで、そこはああの先ほど、川尾さん、データとおっしゃいましたけど、まあ、あのそういう、今、ISO でもその適合油のスタンダードについても協議されてますけども、そういう情報シェアリングをきっちりやって、ですね、まあ、あのなんとか船が止まる機会が少ないようにです、ね、やっていくのが非常に大事かなと思います。うん Thank you very much, uh, Tanaka-san. A lot of good input uh, on, on the panel here with respect to future solutions. Just a quick uh, follow-up on, on the scrubbers. Everyone is mentioning scrubbers, either short-term and uh, especially as a short-term solution. Uh, the discussion around scrubbers has been a quite tough one uh, <laughs> the last uh, years. And, and we basically see two camps. Uh, one is very pro-scrubbers, the other one uh, is uh, against scrubbers, to, to generalize uh, a bit. Uh, what's your, I would say, view on this? Are you on the pro-scrubber team, or are you <laughs> at, the, at the other end, or in the middle? 
if you start with Mr. Valentis here. Uh, I think I uh, have said the obvious <laughs> <laughs> uh, before, uh, but it, it really doesn't really matter. I mean, whether a company decides to go for a scrubber, it's an economic uh, decision, whether it uh, will pay back or not. Um, uh, I mean, it's not for us to judge whether we are, other companies are installing scrubbers or not. And this is not the case here. Uh, we, it, we made a decision that the scrubber does not fit our economic concerns. And this is just it. Now, we need the framework to be there for the companies, and the vast majority of the shipping companies, I'm repeating, is not installing scrubbers. Let's not forget that. So we need the framework to be there, and we need to know exactly how the industry will, will tackle this in, uh, issue on the 1st of January of 2020. Uh, and I'm just saying for the record that, you know, for a medium range, of, uh, for a MR or a Ultramax, uh, a Supermax, which is, has eco characteristics, uh, it's not the, the payback period for a scrubber is not very visible. So this is another reason for not installing scrubbers in this size of vessels. Now for larger vessels, I get the point, I get the exercise, and it might make sense to do the, uh, this. Subject, of course, to the pricing of the, uh, of the high sulfur, which we do not know yet, because un we are under the impression that more and more vessels are putting scrubbers. We're, I don't know if your figures, but we, we estimate that 3,200 vessels will have installed scrubbers by the end of uh, 2020, and this is a substantial number, and therefore demand for high sulfur will still be high, and therefore affecting the high sulfur price. Um, so th the difference between high sulfur and low sulfur is very important. Thank you. Svara? Are scrubbers uh, a good idea and a good solution? And my intelligent answer is yes, but no. <laughs> I mean, it very much depends. Um, I said earlier that, that uh, scrubbers are not a good solution, but it is, it is the solution available right now to, to continue to consume high sulfur fuel oil. Uh, it will be a good solution as long as the spread is uh, significant enough uh, for the next few years to take down the extra investment. And it is also interesting to see, and uh, well, I've known about it for some time, but it, it was uh, public in, in the newspaper at least yesterday in Tradewinds that uh, Hong Kong based owner TCC has fixed two VLCCs on five years charter to BP and both of them with scrubbers. So if a super oil major doesn't believe in their own products and goes for high sulfur fuel oil and scrubbers, mm, that says something about the market. But uh, we think it's, it's an intermediate solution covering the next five years. Thereafter, uh, we think that availability, quality, standards and everything will make the low sulfur fuel oils, I mean, I mean compatible and reliable going forward. So it's an intermediate solution for big ships, primarily. Thank you very much, Svar. We're running a little bit out of uh, time here now, so if you can just have very, very short from Tanaka-san and Kawagoo-san <laughs> on <laughs> basically yes-no scrubber, uh, maybe a little bit more, that will be appreciated. Scrubber,だけで解決するものだけではないんでですね。これはいろんなあの合わせ技というかそういうことだと思います。あの、皆さんがおっしゃってることもそのままだと思います。あの、ま、ただあの、えっと、アカデミックにはですね、一応スクラバー関空にえっと、今のところ問題ないというふうなことになってますんで、あの、ま、あの、適合用だけではなくて